In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Thereen Crane was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that removed all her sins. St. Paul writes, Do you not know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We who were buried therefore with him by baptism into his death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united to him in a resurrection like his. Holy, holy, holy. We give you that thanks and praise for your love shown to your servant Threen and to all your saints who have finished the journey of faith and now rest in your eternal glory. Grant us faithful hearts that our days and receive that joy of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Isaiah 40, 28 through 31. <clears throat> Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is everlasting God, the creator of the ends of earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Another Old Testament lesson is found in Job 19, verses 23-27. Know that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and led that they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know my Redeemer lives, 
and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My hold faints, my heart faints within me. Isaiah chapter 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Word of our Lord. Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks, excuse me, give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. May he is going to play a special rendition of Holy, Holy, Holy at the request of her grandmother, Trine, which really enjoyed it.
A New Testament lesson is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50 through 57. And I tell you this, brothers and sisters, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but shall all be changed. In the moment, in a twinkling of the eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For the perishable body must put on the imperishable and thus the mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The the thing of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us that victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. New Testament lesson in Revelation, chapter 7, verse 9. And after this I looked to behold a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation and from all the tribes and all the peoples and the languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and all the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing, and glory, and wisdom, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed the robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him night and day in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst no more, the sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb will be in the midst of the throne, will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of our Lord. Um, if you could stand with me if you're able, we're going to read John 14, 1 through 6. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you. You may see it for the response, him, beautiful Savior.
profess him as Lord and Savior. He is a good shepherd who has gathered his own to spend eternity in all his heavenly glory. Fill all with your joy and peace. Guard our hearts in this trust and confidence. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Christ Jesus. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God would give you whatever you ask from him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again at the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection of life. The one who believes in me will never die. The one who lives and believes in me will live forever. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. And that is our joy and our celebration. There's three believe that. The truth. Family. Sons and daughters, grandchildren, grandsons, grandchildren, sons and daughters family, and all gathered in remembrance. She told me a lot about you. And I know much. She would share often, and, but in a very loving way. Sometimes she wondered why some choices were made. But you have to know how special you always were to her and always have been. Montana, Mile City, very fond to her. We talked about it often because I worked on a ranch there for a while. Her mother was a fine cook at the sheep ranch. And there's a picture that you brought that was sitting on her Death. It was sitting by her bed the whole time where she was. They put a cowboy hat on her and set her on the horse. Eight years old, she said. Fond memory. She just was thrilled that every time she th talked about it. She gave me some postcards. One of them was the Four Seasons of Montana. And the other one has a whole bunch of pickups, old beat up. Rusted pickups sitting in the field, scattered around, captured on his truck farming in Montana. She said, you should have those. A tremendous hostess. We spent many times and many hours at the house and sharing and talking about the family and those that she held dear. I was always open, and we did spend a lot of time together. She invited Ann and I and others for a dinner one time, because we had talked about artichokes. And I said, I looked at them, never thought about them, but wondered about cooking them. So she purposely served them that night. house. 
the deer, the quail, the birds, she thoroughly loved where she was at. Travel. United Arab Emirates with her dear friend Estelle and there's a picture there, she said, we rode the camels. Bumpy ride, but just was thrilled. She said, they treated us royally there, just, we were special to them. New Zealand and many other places. We thank Lord God that her last travel is to eternal rest and to her eternal home. Faith. She was an unofficial welcome here. So if you were ever through those doors and she did not know you, she'd be the first one to come up to you and say, introduce herself and say, who are you? I'm three. She was on many boards in the preschool and always concerned about what was going on and happening here. Always remember those fall dinners and the cakes that she brought because they were specially decorated. They were just interesting. had the special attachment, specially decorated, just lovingly. She had trees at the house at the time that the cleaning of the orchard or the, the property. And she said, here, make sure you take them, use them. Give them to the youth groups for a fundraiser. Many items that she said you should take to the church and have them put them in the yard sale. Her whole heart and all about it was here at the church. One of the fond memories of one of them is, I had this idea. But she would say often and say, and it was a good idea, we used them. church, very dear to her. One of the first couple weeks that Ann and I had first moved here with the two boys, and she came up for communion, but I got, got to see it. As soon as she got out of the sight, the two boys, my two sons, our two sons were poking each other back and forth. So she saw them. She gave them that look. It worked because they quit and they behaved. Dearly loved here, and you can see that many members of the church. She shared the love of God, Lord God Almighty. Her faith was steadfast. She didn't talk about it, she lived it. She lived it here, she lived at home, and she lived it with you. She impacted many in all that she met. And you know that. She was a tough lady. A few broken bones. We'll get through this. But she was also gentle and kind. She loved the grandchildren, and your grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren. And you know that love. And you know that way that she touched and impacted your lives. And we will miss her. But we also celebrate. We celebrate the eternal salvation that she is now sainted into being in heaven and spirit and awaiting that resurrection of the body to be united again in that eternal kingdom, eternal glory, to the praise and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ in his name. Amen. Teresa. Take in <clears throat> everyone who's here. It's wonderful to see all of you. <laughs> um, 
a lot of you have been longtime friends of moms and of dads, and I appreciate your being here and sharing with us this important occasion. Um, my comments today may be lengthy for most. Um, I've written and rewritten and rewritten and rewritten <laughs> this eulogy because I kept thinking of more things and more things and more things and finally I decided I have to cut it down somehow, but not much. Because when you live 95 years, it's been a very full life, and mom's was. <laughs> so my comments might be long, but my intent is to introduce my mother, our mother, sorry, to the youngest ones, because they knew her as a different person than I think of her. Um, and to inform some of you, and, and I can't do this, there, <laughs> and remind older ones of special memories. To many of you, grandma, our great grandma, was an old woman who moved around with a walker or a wheelchair and had missing teeth and crazy, crazy white hair. But I remember her very differently. To me, she was a woman on the go all the time and who was very encouraging and positive. She encouraged her children to take advantage of every opportunity to learn or to do something new. Hmm, that trickled down to her grandchildren. All of you, you know who you are. You are all well-educated, you're curious, you're well-traveled, you're everything that she held as important. And now in the matter of wild hair, uh, even that was passed down. I think of my son Dennis, and my grandson Bennett and his uncle Denny, incredibly wild hair. And don't <laughs> laugh, Patrick, and Tim, and Andrew, and Megan. You will, you all have it too. <laughs> Many of Threen's traits, creativity, curiosity, love of learning, graciousness, helpfulness, devotion, and faith were also evident are also evident in the next generation. She was the daughter of a Norwegian immigrant mother and a father whose English lineage goes back to the early 1600s in America. She was a firm and faithful believer in God and an active Bible study participant as just one example of her participation in this church. Threen spent most of her life in search of the world's greatest hamburger. <laughs> Even if it meant an hour-long side trip, she had to find it. And sadly, after 94 years, she didn't believe she even liked hamburgers. <laughs> she loved to dance with Dad. Swing, jitterbug, waltz, at a dinner dance, at a wedding reception, especially the live music at a party, or in our kitchen. We danced to 78 RPMs, Benny Goodman and Bing Crosby, and later to 33 and a third RPMs, and Andy Williams and Tony Bennett. The Energizer Bunny and Mom shared many traits. Even though she broke her back while down on her knees opening up a stuck window, and broke each hip, and the second one was replaced after 90. She was up and at them, doing her, her exercises religiously. She didn't slow down until an age at which very few of us will attain. Mom was insistent about good manners, especially table manners. We often had practice sessions. <laughs> They're all laughing, <laughs> they remember. We had practice sessions frequently with the good china and tablecloths. And then we would go out to dinner as our test. 
And often it was at the Flamingo on North Division, which doesn't exist, of course. And Tom remembers the Shirley Temples, and I remember the cotton batting clouds on the ceiling with little twinkle lights for stars. <laughs> Mom was a dedicated 75-year member, 75 years, imagine that, of her collegiate sorority, Sigma Kappa. She traveled to various universities as, a, as an advisor and was active in her alumni group here in Spokane. She was also a volunteer in many organizations, many organizations, too many, I'm not listing them. Mom loved to draw and paint. She always enjoyed sewing, clothing, and teddy bears, and curtains, you name it and took up quilting later, and there's an example of her quilt out in the hall. Mom loved Dad's gift of a piano and started playing piano again after a 50-year lapse, mm -hmm. teaching herself again to play the piano. She was an avid reader, especially of Ivan Doig, who set his stories um, in Montana. She loved reading about Montana history, and for a period of time, several years, she attended Whitworth University taking literature classes. Mom was an excellent front seat car trip social director. <laughs> we didn't always have screens in our cars, boys and girls. We had to entertain ourselves. And she would sing the craziest songs and <laughs> lead us in travel games and we can all still sing those songs, can't we? ka <laughs> ka katie beautiful Katie. <laughs> You're the only good girl that I adore. <laughs> I said they were crazy. Um, well before YouTube, Threen taught herself many skills. She taught herself to wallpaper, to, um, to lay flagstone, to paint and repaint houses, house after house. She challenged herself to make exotic baked goods, including her famous Buch, what is it, Megan, Buch Noel? Buch Noel, sorry, complete with meringue mushrooms. And she also loved to make the featured cake on the front of the Southern Living magazine each month, which often benefited church auctions here. Um, another one that she made were hollow Easter eggs hollow sugar Easter eggs. If she saw something and she liked it, she tried to make it. She even learns it and successfully built doll houses in a barn and fully furnished them. She had a lifelong um, weakness for shoes. Hmm, Mary. <laughs> She admitted she saved and traded her World War II ration coupons so she could get a really beautiful pair of shoes because what really matters. <laughs> Pastor mentioned her travel. She did love to travel. <clears throat> we four siblings all agreed the other day when we went out to lunch to celebrate Danny's blank birthday <laughs> that um, our trip to Europe with mom to visit Danny, who was living in Italy at the time, was one of our most favorite memories. <laughs> Ask any one of us, we have many hilarious details. Um, and I'm out of order here. Threen named after her mother, Clara, insisted that, her, and her mother Clara insisted that never be called Clara. She didn't like the name for herself and she didn't want her daughter to have the name back in 1926. I wonder what my grandmother would think if she knew that my granddaughter was named Clara. <laughs> it's gone full circle. Her father is a sheep rancher and her mother went to normal school and taught in a one-room tar paper schoolhouse in Frozen Monkey, Montana. Growing up in Miles, in Miles City, Montana, the family's next door neighbors, the Nelsons, had indoor plumbing and invited little Threen over on Saturdays for a bath, and they took her to church on Sundays. 
thus cementing her life, her, her lifetime as a Missouri Synod Lutheran. Their son, Orville, later became my godfather, and his daughter, Becky, is sitting here. Wave, Becky, so you can talk to her. <laughs> and her husband, Tom. And interestingly enough, so all related to mom is that my godfather's granddaughter, so her daughter, and her grandchildren, my godfather's great-grandchildren, are my neighbors in Tacoma, and friends in Tacoma attend the same church. Mm -hmm. So after high school, mom enrolled at the University of Montana in Missoula, and later told stories of a fabulously fun train trips across Montana, stopping to pick up school friends along the way. Um, she maintained many of those friendships through their lives, many of them. She, she adored living at her Sigma Kappa house, sorority house, but only until she was wooed by a handsome, recently returned from World War II, Marine and Missoula resident, Donald Crane. He was charismatic, funny, loyal, and a great dancer. And he had a permanent seat at the Mac Club. So who wouldn't sneak out of the window of that sorority house <laughs> and to go on an extra long date with that handsome guy? And who wouldn't leave school to marry him? One year left, and she, <laughs> she chose dad over that degree. Over the next eight years, Denny and I were born. Mom and dad moved into a brand new house in Missoula, um, where she taught herself to wallpaper. And we got the first of our three golden retrievers named Mike, all named Mike. And Don and Green <laughs> heard the call to go west. And in the mid-50s, moved to Spokane. Donna and Tom were born, a mere 15 months apart. Surprise! Threen began her lifelong stint as a busy, busy mother of four and a volunteer for every organization to which she belonged. And she, and she worked part-time at our neighbor's shop downtown for many of those years. So fast forward to building a home near Deer Park in the early 70s and they joined a group of Lutherans who met in a former furniture store, which was the beginnings of this church. The family grew as the kids married and had 12 grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren count as at 13, with two more due soon. One of them sitting in here right now, one of them at, down the street from my house in Oregon. Friends were an important part of mom and dad's world. They had many close friends uh, over the decades, and several of them came from their high school and college associations. With few relatives in the Spokane area, these friends became family. Mom moved to her apartment at Hawthorne after dad died. She enjoyed the activities and friendships there until the pandemic caused a lockdown which caused sadness and isolation. Memory issues set in and it spiraled downward. After over a year, we kids and Madeline were able to go in and see her on a somewhat, somewhat regular basis, rarely for others who could go visit. We all, my siblings and I, all feel blessed to have had our mother for over 95 years. And we're very grateful that she died in her sleep, which was her, her wish, her desire. She, uh, she spoke of that frequently. She had no fear of death, and she trusted God's promise of everlasting life. And she would be delighted to see each and every one of you here today, because you are all very special to her. And extra special to her were Jill and Kathleen, who are playing music. Thank you, ladies.
Thank you, Teresa. She kept intricate records here at the church when she volunteered and um, in the register for our church, everything had to be detailed and every, everything that ever happened, baptisms, the, the weddings, the communions, all got recorded in there. Never been like that ever since, so. God the Father who created this body, Christ Jesus who redeems this body for his eternal salvation, God the Holy Spirit who sanctified this body through the baptismal waters for that eternal salvation, now when we united with body and soul again in that last day in the trumpet sound, or to keep them forever. And we pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death. And by his rest in the tomb, you sanctified the graves of your saints. And by his bodily resurrection, you brought life and immortality to light. So that all who die in him abide in peace and hope. Receive our thanks over the victory over death in the grave that he won for her and for us. Keep us in that everlasting communion with all those who wait for him on earth and with all in heaven who are with him forever. He is the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that you have taught your disciples to come before you in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I know that my Redeemer lives, verses 1 and 5 through 8.
what a joy to see you again, family, and the love that she shared that continues to be shared and continues to grow and is alive in you as it was in her. And to all that are gathered here today in remembrance, Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his favor upon you, grant and give you his peace, now and always. Amen. Go forth in that peace and joy in his name.